Hello Dion and thank you for um, showing me your lovely exhibition here. Could you talk me through your, your, your thought process behind how your work develops? Well I always have to draw first, that's completely essential that I draw on paper and collect visual information first hand. Um, I need to be in the place, um, I need to experience it, I need to understand the geography and the movement, the shapes of the land to be able to be inspired by that particular environment. It's got to have a certain, uh, certain energy and extremity of character. I don't know if that really makes sense, but um, a flat landscape never really does anything for me. If it is flat, I've got to be moving through it fairly quickly, and then and then I'm okay. I've got some energy to bounce from. So this energy, does it translate into your sketchbooks or do you work straight onto your textile work? No, I always draw first in um, using oil bars and graphite in, on paper and I work very quickly. Um, usually, well, I lately, when my husband's been driving and we've been um, on a long road trip, I'm drawing frantically. So. As he's moving at 70, 80 miles an hour, I've maybe got two, three seconds to do a, a drawing. And this, I don't take photographs at that stage. I'm, I'm, just, I'm being the camera. I'm, trans, I'm doing the translation. Normally a camera would do the translation for you from three dimensions into two dimensions. But if I do that myself, my brain is acting as the camera and making decisions, really important artistic decisions and aesthetic decisions. Um, taking three dimensions to two dimensions. And how quickly would a sketch take? Two to three seconds, that's all I've got. That's all I've got. And then, and then the scene changes, the scene moves. We've moved on a hundred yards down the road, so I have to do it instantly and not, not worry too much about it. Put the information down, make it really spontaneous. And it's that spontaneity that translates into my stitch work. I don't want my stitches to be um, to be desperately static. I don't want to be static while I'm sewing. I don't want um, embroidery to, be, to always be considered as a sedatory process. I want it to be vivacious and lively and energetic. And I want to feel um, I want to feel quite exhausted by the end of a, a period of time sewing on my sewing machine. I want to feel like I've been to the gym, I want to feel like I've given like 110% to my work so that after a couple of hours I'm exhausted and I can't do any more. So the mood that you're in on the day, do you think that translates into your work when completely, you're stitching? Completely, completely. I can work from the same drawing on one day and produce one type of piece. I can work from the same drawing the next day. Completely different type of stitch work. It depends on the weather, very crucially, because if it's too dry a day, my threads break all the time, but it, it's the lighting that particular day will give me an inclination towards one type of thread more than another, or colour of thread, um, and the side of bed I get out of. And I notice you've started using quite a lot of metallics in your work. I have and um, that started a few years ago when I did some work for a 50th anniversary show from a, in a local arts um, event and um, used gold thread for that for the golden year of this particular event. Um, but also because it's an illustration to people that some people I have overheard them say that they think my stitches are really bad stitches because the tension is is kind of doolally and a bit off kilter and um, this the working with metallic threads is particularly difficult so it's an illustration to those people that I can really do it. <laughs> you can do it. Could you tell me about the sorts of materials that you work with? The the base cloth or whether you use water soluble or anything like yeah, that? Yeah occasionally I do use water soluble. Um, at the moment I tend to be working on wool. Wool is really soft and it feels good in my hands, it makes a nice noise to me, it makes a nice noise when the machine goes through it. Um, so I work with wools um, and then the threads I use vary, they're always natural um, 
natural fibres, so I use cottons and I use, I use rayons. And what sort of weight of threads would you use? Oh, anything and everything. So the finest thread that I use is 100 weight. That, that one does tend to be a synthetic actually. So I use a 100 weight thread all the way through to a 12 weight thread through the needle. And when you're using your metallics, do you have a particular brand that you use on those? Um, it tends to be what I've got, and I, but I tend to at the moment have Madeira. Madeira, you've had success at high speed with Madeira threads? Yes, yeah. yeah, my yeah. machine goes at 1600 stitches a minute. So yeah, that's faster than the average machine. So the average domestic sewing machine goes at about 800 stitches a minute. So I'm doing double that. What machine have you got? I've got a Janome 1600, which is a semi-professional machine. But I also recommend a Janome 6700, which is another very heavy metal bodied machine. It goes 1200 stitches a minute, but it also does lots of different um, fancy stitches as well. My 1600 only does straight stitch. Do you work with a large sewing table attached to your machine? I've got an extension for the sewing machine that really helps, yeah. And both my, well, all my machines have a slightly longer arm than normal as well. Okay. That makes a difference. And I notice you've got a collection of work, the um, lovely squares that are all placed on the wall. What's, yeah. Who's created those pieces? My students. So I teach online, I teach, I run summer schools in Italy, and I go to Australia, I go to Holland, I go to different, different places around the world to teach. And um, this work is all from a, a variety of students from across the world who I have taught free machine embroidery. I set my challenge to cover a 30 by 30 square with uh, machine embroidery so all that you can see on these pieces is thread, you can't see any fabric and um, they have taken that challenge on in their own aesthetic way so I'm really gratified to see that everybody has done something completely different with the technique and they don't look like my work, they've been inspired to use their own design imagery which is great. And when you use water soluble do you use a large sheet of water soluble or do you just use that to finish off the edges of your work? Um, I do have a collection of work where I've used big sheets of water soluble but in the main the work that you can see here today is, um, is a solid piece of fabric and I sometimes use water soluble around the edges just to give me something to hold on to while I'm sewing. And you do holidays you mentioned, whereabouts are the holidays? Yes, we have a house in Italy Abruzzo, which is central Italy, and um, I run my summer schools there. They're usually um, a week long, and people come, stay in a local hotel, enjoy learning from me, and the whole experience of being in Italy. So it's a holiday and a learning experience all in one. And where can people find more information about that in your classes? Can find out everything they need to know from DionSwift.com, or of course they can email me at dionswift at me.com Thank you very much for your time. Oh, my pleasure.